You're listening to Are We All Clear? Facilitating Security Clearances, a podcast series brought to you by Holland and Knight's Facility Security Clearance Team. Over the course of this series, our attorneys will help take the mystery out of obtaining and maintaining security clearances for government contractors throughout the business life cycle. So are you ready to dive in and find out? Are we all clear? Welcome to the first episode of Are We All Clear? Facilitating Security Clearances, where we decode the acronyms and issues on facility security clearances. I'm your host, Molly O'Casey, an international trade associate with Holland and Knight's Washington, D.C. office. Today's episode will provide basic information regarding what it means for government contractors to have facility security clearances, abbreviated as FCL, and to access classified information, as well as how a government contractor can obtain an MCL. As a starting point, this episode will discuss the need to know, meaning the key requirements for access and sponsor needed before applying for an FCL. Our speaker today is Aaron Estevez, a partner in the government contracts group Holland and Knight in the Tyson, Virginia office. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Molly. Happy to be here this morning. Awesome. So do you want to maybe give a brief introduction and a description of your practice and experience with FCLs? Yes, I'd be happy to. So as Molly mentioned, I'm a government contracts attorney here at Holland and Knight. My practice focuses on counseling contractors on the full range of compliance obligations involved in doing business with the U.S. federal government. I have a particular emphasis on the regulatory implications of transactional matters like M&A, financings and joint ventures. I also work frequently in small business programs. And the reason I'm here today, um, working with contractors that have or are seeking FCLs to support their contracting activity. Um, I'm the co-chair of the FCL practice here at Holland and Knight. Amazing. So as maybe a, a starting point, could you tell us what is an FCL? Absolutely. So an FCL is essentially the U.S. government's approval of a government contractor to have access to classified information. So an FCL could be what we call possessory, meaning that a contractor can handle classified materials at its own physical location, or it could be non-possessory, meaning that contractor personnel are only accessing classified information at an approved government or third party site. FCLs are primarily issued at the organizational level for a contractor by the US Department of Defense through an agency called the Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency, which is abbreviated DCSA. The DCSA is the FCL gatekeeper for a number of other US government agencies as well, NASA, Navy, Air Force, and others. There are certain other agencies that have their own FCL process like the Department of Energy, which has a very similar process for DOE classified contracts. And then there are also some agencies within the Intel community that have their own processes where access might be granted on a contract by contract basis, rather than to a contractor as a whole for use across one or multiple contracts. In any of these cases though, an FCL for a government contractor is a recognition that the company has been vetted in terms of its internal organization, its ownership and control, its security infrastructure, and the government's determined that providing access to classified information is in the government's best interest without an undue risk to U.S. national security. Interesting. So why do FCLs matter? Sure. So only contractors that have an FCL are permitted to access classified information in the U.S. And actually, it's not just any classified information, but then only specifically the information described in the contract and needed for contract performance. There are serious ramifications for access to classified information without the requisite security clearance, and a contractor may not be allowed to perform a contract or a particular contract that requires access unless it's been granted an FCL. For many businesses, an FCL can be a huge business development opportunity. It opens doors to otherwise restricted contracting opportunities or customers that they're trying to break into. At the same time, it does require an initial and ongoing investment into the the facilities, the personnel, the infrastructure, policies and procedures that are really necessary to get the FCL in the first place and then to retain the FCL in good standing. That does sound very useful. How does a company get one? The starting point for any contractor you alluded to in the opening, which is that the contractor has to have a need to know. So they must establish that The contractor needs access to the information to do the job for which it's been contracted or or for which it's bidding in order to receive a contract. The contractor must have a sponsor, meaning another organization that has already been approved for access to classified information. 
that supports the contractor's request to be processed for an FCL itself. That sponsor can be a US government agency that's a customer of the contractors, or it could be another prime contractor that's already had an FCL and for which the entity seeking the clearance is proposed to be a sub, a subcontractor supporting the prime's performance of a government contract. So then once you have both a need to know and the sponsors identified, the sponsor submits an initial request for the contractor to be processed for an FCL to DCSA or the Cognizant Security Agency if it's DOE. For the Intel community, the process is a little different um, and everything goes through the contracting officer for the particular contracted issue. The Cognizant Security Agency responds to the contractor with a request for the information needed to begin the application. And we'll dive into the details of the application, contents and process in later episodes. Hmm. And what's a common pitfall you've seen as you've helped companies process this? Sure. So uh, something that we see fairly often is contractors who anticipate needing or wanting an FCL, either not taking the time to really prepare themselves and their organization for the process or trying to do too much in advance. And so the balance of this timing is a little bit more of an art than a science. Often there's a lot that can be done in advance in terms of preparing the organizational governance documents, slating appropriate individuals and key roles within the company, gathering information from owners and investors, really laying the groundwork for the property, proper security protocols within the company so that the contractor can be ready to submit its application package in a timely manner and work through the process with minimal delays and back and forth with the agency. On the other hand, certain of those steps that will ultimately lead to the granting of the FCL are really dictated by what DCSA's review of the package determines and and subject to the agency's discretion and approval. So trying to implement too much too early can actually result in some duplicative work or having to undo or redo prior steps in the process. We can predict what we think DCSA will require with some degree of certainty based on our group's sort of extensive collective experience with FCLs, but it's a really nuanced and contractor specific exercise. So we guide contractors along the way, depending on their specific unique circumstances. So I highly recommend engaging with experienced advisors early in the process to save time and money in the long run. Thank you so much for your thoughts, Erin. So the area of facility security clearances is a bit of an alphabet soup of acronyms. So each episode, we ask our speaker to explain an acronym that featured in the episode with wrong answers only. Today's acronyms would be FCL or DCSA. Uh, Aaron, do you have any do you have any uh, ideas on some some wrong answers that you could provide for what those acronyms need? Yeah. Yes, I do. And it is quite the uh, alphabet soup when it comes to this practice area. So courtesy of my other co-chair of the FCL practice, Antonia, we're going to say FCL stands for first class lawyer. <laughs> so we know folks don't always listen to podcasts of lawyers talking shop, but when you do, let it be an FCL about an FCL. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for that, Erin. And thank you for taking the time to meet with us today and talk about your experience. On our next episode, we'll be discussing personnel clearances, and I hope everyone has a great week in the meantime. Thank you for listening to Are We All Clear? Facilitating Security Clearances, a podcast series brought to you by Holland and Knight. For more information on our facility security clearance team, please visit hklaw.com forward slash F-C-L. 